Happy Thirsty Thursday, time for another beer review, Master and None here. And this is one of those that's going to be a little different today. Uh, not because we're drinking a cider or anything like that. Uh, because it's going to be a versus challenge. In this corner, tried and true, vastly popular... Focus, focus, New Belgium, fat tire. Um, uh, a beer that uh, really expanded the craft brew market and put New Belgium on the map. 5.2% uh, alcohol by volume. And in this corner, why it's fat tire. Also, by New Belgium, also 5.2% alcohol by volume. Uh, if you don't know, you may be scratching your head just a little bit right now. Uh, the thing is, is uh, Fat Tire decided to change their recipe. They wanted to make it for a new, a new generation and make it more sustainable. And so they took something that well, at one time was extremely popular, maybe a little bit waning in popularity, and com decided to completely redo it. So, uh, we're gonna see how this goes. Um, now, in the past, I haven't been the biggest Fat Tire fan in the world, but I've been meaning to revisit Fat Tire, though. And you'll hear me say this from time to time, a classic is a classic for a reason. So, I, I really, really uh, kind of scratch my head when they go and redo it so change the recipe so when I heard that this was happening I went and got some fat tire and waited until I saw the new fat tire and went and got some of that there it is one of the last original New Belgium fat tires that I will ever uh, taste. I guess I got five more in the six pack, but. Cheers to that. We're just not even gonna take a sip of that one yet. Instead, we're going to grab fat tire 2.0. and pour that out. Well, there we go. We don't even have to taste them yet. Oh, uh, they're pretty similar in color, actually. I was gonna say, I thought the original was a little darker. Uh, no. Not so much. We have the Original fat tire here with the Master of None glass and the new fat tire in the unadorned glass. Let's uh, let's taste these out. I haven't had a fat tire for quite some time either, so. It's a nice drinking beer. I'd say if, I mean, Fat Tire is a good beer. I'd say if it's waned in popularity, it's because maybe because beer the beer industry's gotten so crazy, everything's either an IPA or it's a barrel aged this flavor, that flavor, this flavor, that flavor. Um, not because there's anything wrong with Fat Tire. Good, classic, smooth. Maybe slight differences on the nose. Similar.
but not the same. Maybe if they had called this Fat Tire Light or something. It's just... It's like it's Fat Tire, but it's a little less. I'm not going to go so far as to call it Flat Tire, but it's just... It's like I can taste the sustainability and it leaves me yearning for when I didn't have to worry about that. <clears throat> now, I say that and if you handed me this beer, there's nothing off-putting about it. Like if they were looking to, for on the flavor profile, to tone it down just a little bit, so maybe, maybe it could become the next, uh, I don't know, Coors Light or PBR or something like that, and you could get soccer moms and frat kids to drink it, then, you know, maybe this will be a good thing for them. Maybe they'll pump some new life into this tire. It is not bad. This is good. It's only when I grab old fat tire that I really notice a really notice a difference. And there's just a little bit just a little bit more flavor there. Um, I guess, you know, I'm not like taking my used motor oil and dumping it out in the yard or anything like that. But I also don't really want to have to sacrifice good beer for you know, anything. I mean, I guess if you put one of my children there and I had to sacrifice good beer for it, I would, but... What are we really gaining here? Are you really making a difference with this? I, they say it's sustainable and earth-friendly, but... But it's also not quite as good. Are you telling me two move forwards? We have to move backwards? I don't like that. I don't plan on uh, moving into a cave and start carrying around a club or anything like that anytime soon. And I, I suspect a lot of you also will not want to do that. There are lines that cannot be crossed, and messing with my beer is one of them, but no, a lot of that's in jest. Uh, There's nothing wrong with new fat tire, and I'm going to happily drink the other five of them. Maybe before I happily drink the other five old fat tires, though, because if I did it at the same time, or, you know, kind of back and forth, I'd drink the old fat tires first because they are a little bit better. Honestly, though, I was expecting more of a difference. Um... If I didn't have them side by side, and I didn't know that they changed it, I might not have noticed. It's not, it is not like a, uh, if you if you love fat tire, it's not like, I don't think it's a deal breaker. I mean, I guess if you're an enthusiast, maybe. I don't, it's, it's more subtle than I expected, so. When they said they changed it, 
I thought it was going to be, I, I didn't, I don't exactly know what I was going to ex expect. I thought it was going to be two drastically different beers, and this is not the case. I guess we'll have to do a toast to Fat Tire, Old Fat Tire. It's kind of a a goodbye. And uh, not a terrible hello to the new Fat Tire. I haven't had it in a long time. Um, it's better than I remember it actually so I was never a huge fat tire fan and uh, I'm really enjoying this so a fitting good send-off to fat tire this has been master of none like subscribe click the notification button we'll catch you on the next one